Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. As we draw this course to a close, then, the last chapter in Mazzoni's book has to do with deal with using the tools of ethics. Hopefully, the way that we want to look at this course is that every chapter just gave us different tools for us to be able to look at various ethical situations. So that before, when we used to say that something is right or wrong, now we can say, we can ask ourselves, well, why would a person say that something is right or wrong? If we looked at it through the lenses of virtue ethics, or of natural law ethics, social contract ethics, utilitarian, deontological, or care ethics, each of those will look at a situation from a different perspective, raise different questions, and arrive at different conclusions. And so we just look at all of these theories and principles that we've studied during this course as different tools in our toolkit. So that rather than just looking at something through one perspective, through one lens, now we have different lenses to be able to look through, uh, to, to be able to look at these situations. So hopefully what will happen is, whereas we used to look at things from our one perspective, now we'll be able to look at it from other people's perspectives as well. It'll help us to learn more about other people's perspectives, and in turn about our own perspective, why it is that we think that certain things are right or wrong. And in doing so, at Holy Family Catholic Church, we always talk about how we're a welcoming and inclusive community. Rather than judging others and telling them that they're wrong or bad, wait a minute, let's, let's enter into a relationship with them, big care ethics, and see how it is that we can better understand them, because that helps us to better articulate what we believe as we listen to what it is that other people believe as well. There are many perspectives which is what ethics, the study of ethics, would show us that there are many perspectives on what's right and what's wrong. So shall we take, let's take a look at two concrete cases and see what it is, how it is we can start applying some of these tools that we've learned to two concrete cases. The first one has to deal with a former murderer, Stanley Tukey Williams, who was born in 1953, so he was living during our lifetimes. He was executed by Governor Schwarzenegger in 2005. Let's talk about his case first, then we'll come back to that case of fetal alcohol syndrome, which we raised when we were talking about deontological ethics. So first, the case of Tukey Williams. He was the co-founder of the Crips. We've all heard of the Bloods and the Crips. So the co-founder of the Crips, responsible for several murders, is now charged to be executed. He's found guilty of the murders, and he's going to be executed. Let's take a look at it using various tools that we've learned during these three weeks. So, from the perspective, for instance, of deontological ethics, which we covered earlier this evening, from the perspective of deontological ethics, Tukey was a responsible and free adult. He knew the consequences of his actions, and so he committed a murder. He deserved to die. That's deontological ethics. We have a certain duty, a certain obligation, a certain responsibility. He was free. He knew that by doing a certain thing, he would receive a certain punishment. So that's essentially the perspective of deontological ethics. Utilitarian ethics. Utilitarian, we recall, has to do with how it is that we're always thinking about the good of others. Well, there's a wrench thrown into this whole story because now that Tukey's in prison, Tukey's realized what he's done, and Tukey has written books for children that have to deal with gangs and your neighborhood, gangs in your schools, gangs and helping kids to think twice about getting into the gang scene. So the question becomes, okay, now that he's writing these books that are benefiting <coughs> others, is it in our best interest as a society to execute him, or would he do... Would it be better for our society for him to continue doing the good <coughs> for him to continue doing the good that he's currently doing? Virtue ethics. Remember, virtue ethics talks about who we are as a result of all of our decisions. Our decisions become habits, and then that forms who we are, often because of the role models that we're exposed to. So now we take a look at how it is that a person like Tukey was probably influenced by those around him. 
had certain models who modeled to him certain behaviors. He did those behaviors over time. It became a habit for him, and that, was, that became his lifestyle. So maybe he didn't have those models back then, but what happens now that he seems to, be, to have reformed his life and is living according to other virtues, like helping the children of our society? Now that he's exhibiting virtuous behaviors, do we execute him? If we do execute him, are we virtuous? Is that virtuous for us to execute a person who perhaps before was not virtuous but is now seemingly virtuous? And if so, are we in control of our feelings? Remember our, our feelings in, when we talk about virtue ethics? When we feel something like fear, or in the case of Tuki, anger, right? When you feel anger at someone who's murdered someone else, what do you do with that? Is it not true that we're swinging too far to one extreme by simply killing that person? Is there some other virtue that would, that would not demand his life? Natural law ethics, when we studied that, in the same way that the ball is inclined, has an inclination to go down, Tukey has an inclination now to save his own life. It seems that we should not get in the way of that. We shouldn't contradict his natural inclination to preserve himself. The Pauline principle, which we studied, suggests that we shouldn't do evil, we shouldn't kill him, in order to achieve a greater good, which is the safe society that we're aiming for. Also, the principle of double effect, we talked about that when we studied natural law, how it is that there's often a good consequence and a bad consequence. The good consequence, the bad consequence is that Tukey dies if we execute him. The good consequence is that it sets an example for anyone else. The question is, which do we intend in all that? We intend the good consequence, it seems, a just society. It's not that we're intending his death, which is why St. Thomas Aquinas could, could get behind the death penalty and execution. Social contract ethics, when we studied that, that has to do everything with the agreements we have in society. Obviously, Tukey didn't follow our societal norms because he didn't see the benefit in it. He thought it was better, for instance, to involve himself in criminal activity. And so we have to ask ourselves, since social contract ethics is all about ethical egoism, what's best for me, what's really best for you? Is it best for you here in Austin, Texas, that Tukey in California die for having murdered some certain people? Follow me? What is in our self-interest? And different people are going to argue it in different ways. Some people are going to say, yeah, what's best for me is that we have a safe society, so if people have to die, they have to die. Other people would say, you know what, some guy in a prison in California, whether he dies or not, doesn't touch me. Care ethics, <clears throat> we just talked about caring for those closest to us. Imagine for a moment if Tukey were your own son, or brother, or friend. How would that shape how it is that you look at him? And even if he's not your son, or your brother, or your friend, we're all related to him as fellow citizens. So it just seems that we have some responsibility. So should, would a caring society kill certain members of that society? Should we promote execution? Or should we be looking for rehabilitation and compensation to victims? We talked about restorative practices. That's what it's all about. Instead of punishing the child, let's find a way for us to be able to bring healing and compensation to those who've been hurt. But if a person's dead, obviously they can't do that. And so that simply is taking the case of Chucky Williams, under the grips, and saying how it is that we can use various ethical tools to take a look at the situation from different perspectives. We pause there for any thoughts that are percolating in our minds. Vincent? The question is, which ethics should we follow? Yes, he did these crimes. <coughs> but now that he's in, a, in jail, they've taken him out of the environment that he was in. And yes, he did write these stories. So which ethic should we follow just because we've taken him out of society or taken him out of where he was at before, where he can't do the crimes anymore, and now he's doing good. But if we were to let him back in to the society where he was at, what would he do? Still continue to write the stories? Or would he continue to put the crimson in the woods? So... You're asking us which ethics should we follow. Remember when we, went, when we were talking about social contact theory, what did we say? We said you can't derive an ought from an is, simply meaning here we're simply talking about what these different the ethical systems are, and ultimately you have to try them on like a pair of shoes, 
or like a pair of glasses and decide which one, if, if, if you're trying them on like a pair of shoes, which one is most comfortable for you. But also if you're trying them on like a pair of glasses, right, how it is that if you look through the lenses of different theories, you're going to see different things, right? The ontological ethics, he deserves to die. Care ethics, wait a minute. Do caring societies execute people? Are we a caring society? That's an excellent question. Are we a caring society? And if so, then what are we doing executing people? These are deep ethical questions. I've always thought, Father, I don't agree with the, the death penalty, but I always uh, think, like, why do we spend so much money in supporting them and then still doing it? I mean, either he's been uh, found guilty for his actions, do it. But we spend so much money. Well, now that he, he's doing good now, well, maybe it is good for us to stop the execution and give that extra chance. I mean. But during the first part, I always think, like, why do we spend so much money 30 years before we can execute somebody? Money on what? And we'll come back to those questions. So where we're going is, this is a course in philosophy, next is, which is moral, moral philosophy, ethics. The next course is moral theology, where we start looking at through the, through the lenses of Christianity and Catholicism. Of course, after that is social justice, where we start to start talking about certain issues like the death penalty. We start asking ourselves, what do we do with these things? Because these are complex issues. Because if we say that they're found guilty, well, what if that person really isn't guilty? Right. And we are killing an innocent person. That would be hard for me to sleep at night knowing. It's hard for me to sleep at night knowing that our that we've executed people who are innocent. So these are going to be the issues that we come up with two courses from now when we get to social ethics, right? Catholic social ethics. How, how do we take all that we've learned in moral philosophy and moral <coughs> theology and apply it now to complex situations like the death penalty, euthanasia, immigration. We could, go, we, we could come up with all sorts of issues that we could be applying this to and we will at the end of this class.